Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely wife, Rochelle, as always. Rochelle, how are you feeling today? Good. Another uh, beautiful, beautiful rainy day. <laughs> I hear the thunder rolling. If you hear some crazy noises here on the podcast, it's because we got a good thunderstorm going, and I think it's sitting in rain for the next week. So, hey, yeah. got that to look forward to. We haven't had any rain, so. Yeah, I know, that's all we're needing is some more. I, think. <laughs> I, but I, I really need to be out there with my raincoat and umbrella letting some water out of the pool because yeah. it's getting bad. But, hey, one thing, uh, we are getting on a plane in the morning <laughs> and going to the Bahamas. <laughs> Cook a steak contest. So I don't care. It can rain here as long as it's not uh, raining in the tropics. <laughs> it is rains. that called? Do you consider that the tropics? It's the Caribbean. Yeah. The Bermuda Triangle, right? Is that where we're going? Don't say that. Uh-oh. Are you one of those conspiracy theorists? You know it. <laughs> Amelia Earhart went down in the, in the Bahamas? Yes. No, she didn't. She went down over in the Hawaii. Area. Oh, well, I don't know. In the Pacific. Sh- shows you what I know, right? You know, I'm going to know. <laughs> All the conspiracy stuff, I do know that. <laughs> so what are we talking about today on the podcast, Shell? Well, I thought we'd jump right in and talk about this week's recipe. Hey, yeah. Um, everybody been wondering when I was going to do some of that deer meat that, I, that I've that i been hunting all winter, and I thought it was a good week to do some. So so I thought out some of the back straps I had. And I always put the back straps up whole. Um, some deers I take the processor, I get them to do sausage, summer sausage and smoked sausage, different things like that, snack sticks. But um, when it comes down to the back straps, the, probably the best part on the deer, I always get those whole, and I, and I usually put those up myself. Um, sometimes you cook them whole. Sometimes I love cooking. Like, I've like some, a beef I've, loin. I've got yeah. some good recipes uh, yeah, on the site too, already yeah. for some whole back. i got one for a whole back strap and a stuffed back strap, I think. Yeah. Which are great ways. But sometimes you like cooking them like a steak, or at least I do. And yeah. that's kind of um, the way I do it. I butterfly them into where they're almost about the shape of a nice filet you would get at a steakhouse. Well, you first cut them into four inch pieces. That Yeah. And that's kind of what makes Did you it say that the butterfly. Say, no, yeah. I didn't. That, that's step one. Step one, trim that back. Uh, you got to trim that back strap up, get all that sinew, any little bit of fat off of it. Because all that wild taste you get from deer meat comes from not properly trimming it. It's not just that, I mean, deer meat is really, it tastes great. It ha, you know, has a really mild flavor of good red meat, clean. I say it's, you know, non GMO, certified organic as it gets, free range, because these are wild animals, you know. <laughs> and, and it's really, really great meat, but a lot of people are turned off on it because they don't know how to process it. Yeah. They don't know how to get it, you know, they don't know how to put it up, store it and all. And so that's, that's where it comes down to. Uh, when you when you when you come to doing any kind of meat, it all goes into the processing of it, especially wild game. And so with these back straps, I just clean them up. I get rid of all that sinew, that tough connective tissue that's on the outside. That's where you get that gaminess from. I trim off any excess fat that's on it because the deer fat, I mean, it's it's wild animal, so it's going to have a little bit different flavor. But when you get it down to the the pure red meat, oh, it's so good. It's a different color meat too. It's real deep red. Yeah, it's a real, real deep, rich yeah. color. And so, what, as opposed to a beef, you know. Now we're getting into those four inch pieces like you're talking about. And so what I do, I kind of take the the. The, the the biggest part of that back strap where, you know, the app, the size is about the same all the way down. Kind of lose a little bit on each end because it tapers off. On the off. tail, yeah. But we're talking about, you know, the center 75% of it where it's all the same size. That's where I'm cutting these steaks from. And don't throw those end pieces away. They make great stir fry. You can wrap them up with tester pieces, which is what I did. I throw them in the marinade and cook them on the grill, too. But it, they're kind they of little came testers. Off. Yeah, yeah, they came off a little early, and we had them for Snack. lunch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for the fillets, I want to cut them in about four-inch pieces first. Now, that's a super thick uh, piece of steak there. But what I do is I come back with my knife about midways, two inches in, and I cut down about three-quarters of the way, and it just opens it up. And now you have pretty much two steaks, but they're still connected, and it makes one large fillet. Is that's that gonna, how they do, like, a beef fillet? Well, no, beef fillet is the... The, the beef uh, loin or back strap is big enough to where you don't have to do that. Yeah. I mean, if you think about the beef loin, it's really like the ribeye, the sirloin, all that. Um, it's different kind of than the beef tenderloin. We're not, now the deer tenderloins, that's a whole different recipe. We'll talk about those <laughs> later because we're, we're cooking, we're cooking what would be the ribeye steak, the sirloin, the New York strip, all that. That's what we're cooking. 
on the deer. And then we call it the back strap because it's located right on top of the, of the ribs, right along each side of the backbone. Same thing on a pig. You know, if you think about a pork loin, that's what it is. We're cooking a deer loin. So it's a separate cut altogether to get a tender loin. Yeah, the tender loin is, when, when you talk about tender loin, it's that inner loin. It's right on the inside of, of kind of. Um, on the rib cage? This was the fillet, the back, back towards the back, more towards the hind quarters. And it runs, it's, it's just two tender muscles that connects kind of the back legs to the front part of the torso. And it's real tender because it doesn't get worked a whole lot. Um, and it's real lean and that's, man, it's some really, really good meat, but the, you know, in a deer, they're not very big. Now you get some of your real larger animals, elk, and you know, when you start getting up into size, they're a bigger size, but for white tailed deer, they're really good. We always get them out, but we usually fry those up, um, yeah. you know, with biscuits and gravy or something like that. But, but, uh, but now we're doing steaks and that's what I'm doing with the back strap. And that's what, I mean, we talked about what are you going to call it, and we decided we call it deer steaks. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That's what we do call we it. We don't call it venison, you know. No, I mean, I, I say, I use venison uh, when I'm writing about it loosely because I know people everywhere else probably refer to it as venison. And Mississippi is just deer. <laughs> and, and when you talk about deer, Mississippi is white-tailed deer. It's not mule deer. It's not, you know, any of these other species of that. There's all kinds of species of venison. Elk falls in there. Moose falls in there. Uh, antelope falls in there. That's all venison. But when we talk about deer in Mississippi, it's white-tailed deer, mm-hmm. and that's that's what. Um, but you really I'm cooking? You could use this recipe on any type of oh, venison. Yeah. You could use it. On, yeah, you could use it on any type of venison. It'll work great on beef too. Yeah. If you can't, you know, if you don't get deer meat, you just want to try this recipe. By all means, do it with the a beef tenderloin, especially with the things you. You know, the marinade and then wrapping the, it in the bacon and serving it with the asparagus with the, the, the cream sauce, boars and cheese cream sauce. Man, that's good. So let's talk about the boars and cheese sauce. Where are you going to take credit for that one? Well, I kind of, I kind of t- put my interpretation on you know a recipe that I got from Swan Life guys. Yeah. They liked using that one. They used it in um, some ancillary contests before and turned me onto it. But for those of you that haven't had boars and cheese. It's it's kind of a herbed cream cheese. Kind of, yeah. The, the one I buy... It's not as thick as a cream cheese. No, it's a lot softer than cream yeah. cheese. And uh, I let it get room temp, and it's really soft. And I guess it's... Um, you serve it like a party cheese ball or yeah, something? Yeah, probably. Is it's that, great just on it's crackers. It's real spreadable. Yeah. yeah, it's real spreadable. But it has some uh, garlic in it. It has some different herbs, probably parsley. And um, I don't know how much more. Probably maybe a little oregano or thyme or something like that. It's not overly herby. But it makes a really good sauce when you thin it down with a little bit of heavy cream. And I just put a pinch of lemon pepper in it and a little bit of salt just to, you know, give it a little bit of flavor. And when I'm serving it, you could have served it over the deer, the fillets, mm-hmm. but I served it over the asparagus and kind of set the deer on it. And it's good for when you cut the steaks to just sop it all up. Yeah. I mean, it was really good. <laughs> I don't like um, the appearance of the sauce over a, a steak. You we know, learned it doesn't make us, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't make a pretty a picture. The appearance it takes away from the appearance when you when you do that. Yeah, but if you put it, serve it underneath. Yeah, it, you still it, get to see the meat, and you get all that great flavors from it being on the bottom. And I would, you know, we served it, when we ate it. We had it on the side too in a bowl. So if you wanted a little extra, you could dip a little extra. And I did. It was really good. It you was know, good. You know, a lot of times you think about doing an asparagus with like a. A Bernay sauce or hollandaise sauce or something like that, and this kind of took the place of it. it's a little bit creamier, mm-hmm. has a little bit, um, a little bit of more herb, garlicky flavor. But man, it was really good. Do you think you serve? Um, do you do you shoot to serve venison more rare? I do. I want it rare because I, I mean I don't want to cook the taste out of it. And if deer meat, especially, it, I mean beef's the same way. But the more you cook it, the more flavor you cook out of it. So. Um, it's really tender when you when you eat it rare to medium rare, um, but that's that's as far as I want to go with it. If you're going past medium or you know getting up into medium well, you might as well just be eating some burger or something. That's, I mean, you've cooked all the flavor, all that good moisture out of it by taking it that far. Can you and imagine? it's not for some people. Some people like it that way. They want it burn up. But, Can you, you imagine know, you know, eating uh, that steak well done? No, and you know I've been reading uh, one of Anthony Bourdain's books, and he he's talked about when he's worked in steakhouse and. They love the, they love, chefs love to see people come in that order well done meat. And you'll notice, you see a lot of restaurants they'll put on there, we're not responsible for the quality of the steak if you, if you order, you know, past 
yeah, of medium yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. They do that because that's where they're getting rid of all their overly aged or steaks they oh, couldn't really? sell that are getting old. Because you can put them on there and nuke them. <laughs> you know, you're, you're cooking them so far past moisture, you couldn't tell if it was good or bad. Yeah. You couldn't take a rare steak and do that because, you know, you, you taste all that age on it. Or it's been dirty. sitting in the cooler. Yeah, but they love seeing <laughs> They love seeing suckers coming there wanting it, wanting it well done. They so, say, yeah, we're getting rid of last week's steaks now. We, we weren't going to be able to sell them, but hey. But so let's talk about the marinade. That yeah, was one thing that really that? made these fillets. And now Mississippi's known for marinades. There's a lot of great ones down in central Mississippi. you got Hoover sauce. Uh, you got my buddy John down there. Fireman John's got a good one. Um, the folks at U-Bonds, Mr. Gary, had been making a, a marinade for a long time. And and I guess it's I don't know if it's kind of a a delta thing that's kind of spilled over to that central Mississippi Jackson area or what, but there's a lot of great marinades that, that people use down there, and that's what I like to use for my uh, for my deer. It's kind of a it's kind of a Worcestershire meets soy sauce meets a little bit of of tang with some vinegar to it. And then a little all, bit of sweet with some always honey. has some sweetness to it, like brown sugar, and that's what I use, brown sugar and honey. And then you got to have a little water just to kind of thin it down. And you can season it however you like. Usually it's not heavily seasoned. It's it's all the flavors of the liquids it's in. But it's that's kind of um, what I use. In, uh, it was really good. Two hours uh, soaking those fillets in that. And it was time to grill them. Yeah. Um, never mind. Go ahead. Well, the grill part was easy. <laughs> I mean, when I'm cooking deer, I'm not, you know... On these steaks, it's just about a hot fire, a hot grate, just like I was at, at a steak contest. I've got the grate running about 500 degrees. Um, I took, I cooked these on my Weber. So you can cook them on any kind of grill. As um, long as it's hot, it'll work. I don't care what it is. If you, I've, I've done them in an old barrel with just a piece of metal grate over the top yeah. of it, like expanded <laughs> metal, and just cooked them sitting around a chair. But um, you could pretty much cook it on whatever you got that you can hold a fire in. And that's about three um, minutes each side. Yeah, well, I, I did about yeah about three minutes each side. But you know, what? I wrapped them in bacon. But if you've ever cooked steaks, uh, especially fillets of any kind, you know they get done fast. And so, if you wrap them in just raw bacon, and a lot of times you get them at the store, they're wrapped in raw bacon. But that bacon never cooks. I mean, it, it gets done. I mean, it's done enough to eat, but it's chewy. It doesn't it's, look good. Yeah. It, it looks undercooked, yeah, especially the beef fillets. Yeah, I hate it. I hate yeah. it. I don't like it like that. I want my bacon to have some brown to it. I want it to look cooked. Have some texture. And so yeah. I'm, you, the bacon really adds some extra flavor because you get a little bit of smokiness from the bacon. You it get the fattiness because fat yeah. the fat cooks. And so what I do is I pre-cook the bacon just about six minutes. Not long. I mean, it's just starting to turn brown. It's still real pliable. You know, Good. it's soft, floppy bacon. If you like floppy bacon, that's you want to step under the way you like it is what I yeah. guess. And um, so that's what I wrapped around the outside. 425 degree oven for five to six five minutes. Five six minutes, yeah. something like that. Get it out of the grease as soon as it comes out. Yeah, because it needs to dry because you want it to cool down, stop cooking. Well, we still want thing, it to wrap. We want yeah. it to wrap all the way around the fillet. Another thing, if you... um leave it in that grease it continues to it starts absorbing it as it cools and it gets down greasy. yeah it gets greasy piece of bacon all i did was take some paper towels and put it on a plate and mm-hmm. take that bacon and kind of pat it and layer it pat it till i get it all off and then move it over to a platter and it's good to go and uh lay it flat helps too yeah you don't want it to curl up yeah it, you know that's one thing about cooking bacon in the oven versus cooking it like in a pan on the, on the stove um it doesn't it doesn't uh scrunch up you know it stays about as flat as you put it on the pan and you don't have to worry about weighting it down or anything like that it'll hold its shape and it's really great if you're using it to wrap something with but that's how you know we used to always cook bacon just in a skillet on stove yeah that's how my mom always did it but since we've you know or microwave we, when start, i was a kid i'd do it, do it in the microwave did you, did you have one of those uh no. microwavable bacon things that had the little <laughs> tilt angle no. to it and the little, uh, we had one of those no it was like two paper towels you and know, bacon. three pieces of bacon, two paper towels. Seven minutes and you got bacon? <laughs> I don't remember, but yeah. But uh, yeah, we so we, um, I do it in the oven now. Once we discover cooking mm-hmm. bacon in the oven, Wright's bacon is my favorite one to cook in the oven. But but for this recipe, you just want thin, cheap, store brand bacon. Cook it about six minutes till it's floppy. Wrap it around those fillets. As soon as that grill's hot, go to cooking. Now we're talking a minute and a half. I put a turn on them, another minute and a half, and flip them over and do the same thing. And that, you did season them. Well, I hit them with just a little bit of extra AP and a little bit of extra steak rub. 
just you know, just because most of that flavor wa- you know, washes off when it's in that marinade. So I just give them a little final touch. They can take it. It's not going to be too salty. They weren't salty at all. No, in not fact, salty they, at all. I thought they could have used a little extra kit, you know, hit of salt. You um, could have done that. Like when they come off, I could have hit them with a little more just to Yeah, but that'd be up. more to taste, really. Yeah, it really is. I'd rather it be a hair on the under salty side. Me too. And you taste all that flavors and it'd be overly salty. Me you too. Can't eat it. it ruins it. Yeah. yeah. You can always add salt, you know, to taste. Well, the cooking, the cooking process was simple. I mean, it's just. Six minutes and they're done. I mean, I tempt them. They're like 120. That's when they're coming off. I mean. That was the question I was going to ask you. So if someone didn't want to do, you, you took them off at 120, which is rare. Yeah, but, they, but I let them they rest now. Seven five minutes, minutes. Probably. Five and degrees. That, they're going to go up to about yeah 125, which is perfect. I mean, that's, to me, that's getting on. We're fixing to hit medium for long, mm-hmm. you know, or not, you know, medium rare. Yeah. Um, what If someone wanted to make it medium Rare instead of rare. Would they pull it at 125? Take, yeah, take it to 125 and then let it rest because you're going to be pushing that 130 right at that mm-hmm. by the time they set. But just don't go don't go past that, please. You'll break my heart. <laughs> you serve me deer that's medium and it doesn't have, I mean, it's, it's done losing all of its pink color. Man, cooked all the goodness out of it. And you, we also cooked asparagus for this one. Yeah, and we, just, to, just to have something to plate it with, and that's what that cream, uh, the boars and cheese sauce went with. Uh, asparagus is super simple to cook. Uh, everybody should be eating it because it's easy. I mean, we t- I take them, wash them, rinse them, cut the little woody stems off, just find it where it breaks and trim all of them to that size, toss them in a little bit of olive oil and then some, some AP or salt and pepper, whatever you, you know, yeah. something, whatever you like to season Any kind of season oil would work. And then it takes, I put them on the Memphis uh, wood fire grill, had it running at 400 degrees, and it was about eight minutes. And I rolled them about halfway through just kind of to get them cooked even on both sides. And that's it. I mean, even if you're doing it in your oven, you can cook asparagus in eight to ten minutes in a 400-degree oven. And, man, it's it's, don't, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's so good. It's Sometimes really, it only it's takes quick six. Size. Yeah. And it depends on how thick your asparagus is, you know. We usually have asparagus, you know, once or twice a week just because yeah. it's a good size. It's vegetables, good for you. It's green. It's Makes delicious. the doctors happy. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't like the boars and cheese sauce, but. Well, uh, um, you know, I always ask you, what would you do differently? I mean, yeah, you ask me that, and I'd, I'll usually say the same thing. <laughs> I would do nothing to it. <laughs> enjoy it more. Enjoy it, yeah. Um, I didn't have time to enjoy that. We were in a rush. Yeah. We were going to a housewarming that night, so. Yeah. We had to. Our scheduling's been kind of messed up the past couple of weeks because we've had, you know, Cosmos came and we're going out of town. And, and so things got a little off, but, hey, we're making it work. So we shot, we usually shoot on Tuesdays, Nothing, yeah. but we're we're days ahead. We shot that video Saturday. Saturday. Today's, then, what is today? Wednesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, today's normal film day. So <laughs> yeah. It's not normal podcast day. but Yeah, we try to do the podcast Thursdays. Yeah. Um, so you wouldn't do anything differently. No, that was a good recipe. I mean, I've it been was. cooking deer fillets that way since I can remember. I mean, yeah. it's you it's hard them. to beat them that way. Mm-hmm. I mean. Now, um, you can. Uh, I'll tell you what you can do is uh, jacquard them a little bit to get them a little tender. You could soak them a little bit longer. Yeah. Two hours is kind of my minimum on those, but I, I've went overnight with them, and they're yeah. really good. They're I just bet it get really more flavor gives some in flavor them. in there. As far as the cooking those, man, just – just any kind of fire works. I mean, you don't have to have the grill grates. Believe me, they work and they make it look pretty. But you could cook them any kind of way. The grill grates are great because they prevent the flare-ups. They give you that even distribution of heat. They, they make it easier to grill. Got a number coming in on the hotline. <laughs> Who is Put it? Put your own hole, Mark Williams. <laughs> so this weekend... We did an SAA contest at Memphis Barbecue Supply. We did. It was a cold day. Crappy um, weather. Crappy weather once again. I put crappy weather, good contest. Yeah, good, great <laughs> contest. Uh, yeah, Jimmy Shotwell and the gang out there at Memphis Barbecue Sl- Supply ran a wonderful contest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miss Jane and Mr. Larry were the reps. They did an outstanding job for the SCA. Um, congrats to Mr. William Mann. He won that one. Did he? Robert Perkins won the ancillary with the uh, bologna pizza. Did you see that? Uh-uh. So it was the, the side dish was bologna or I guess just the ancillary category. Which anything, is an optional category. Yeah, anything you wanted to, we didn't cook it, but anything you wanted to do with bologna, 
Did and they give you like a tub of bologna, or did you bring your, your own. own? But I saw a picture of his, and he I think he posted it on his Facebook. You can go in there and check it out. But he to took it he took bologna, and it looked like he sliced it thin, almost like pepperoni. Mm-hmm. And when it cooked, it looked like salami or pepperoni or something. Well, did he cut it down, or was it still like mm, you know bologna it was, size, no, it was, sandwich size? No, it wasn't. It wasn't big like that. So I don't know if he cut it down or if he started with you know they make those smaller sticks of bologna. Oh, I yeah, before. yeah, yeah. So I bet he used those. Really good idea. Did he pre cook the the bologna before it went on the pizza? You didn't ask. I was busy. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, you were busy. (laughs) (laughs) I had a lot of talking to do, man. We had a we had an impromptu bourbon tasting and a Jack Daniels whiskey tasting and (laughs) (laughs) And a tequila tasting. I looked at that one time. I was saying, Lord, it was Sunday, and I don't know where I didn't bring anything to drink with me except Mark Williams brought some water for everybody, Mm -hmm. and then somehow. The bourbons just came out. They appeared. <laughs> it was a good time. Uh, you know, Michael cooked. Birthday? My son Michael cooked. You helped him. Mm-hmm. Waylon cooked with this. Uh, I cooked. Steak team. Mark Williams, steak team. Jay Durbin, Heath Riles, and Austin Dukers. And um, let's see. Austin was the highlight of the day for our team. He got eighth place. Michael actually beat the rest of us. He was 19th. I think Waylon yeah. was 24th. I was 25th. I don't know where. Everybody else fell. Yeah, they out. were back behind. I was I was trying to throw it. I actually made a hundred dollar bet with Heath that I was gonna beat him. But uh I we, Did you beat him? Yeah, I beat him, but I canceled the bet. I felt bad. I told him if we bet like that, it doesn't count unless both of us in there are top ten. Or one of these in the top ten. Yeah, yeah. If I'd have, if I'd have got ninth, I'd have, I'd have made him pay me a hundred dollars. You would have I thought felt I was gonna take somebody's money and I finished twenty fifth. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty sad. <laughs> But out of uh, 65 teams, it was, was a lot. There's a yeah. lot of teams out there at Bartlett. You would have thought surprised. Michael won the whole thing when he found out he beat everybody. Oh, he was so happy. He cut up everybody's tester steak, which was good, and everybody come over and tried them. There was a uh, man, we had some really good steaks. I was happy with mine. I, you know, I didn't. I did an Instagram story that day of kind of the process. You did. You did. It looked pretty good, didn't it? Yeah, I thought so. It was interesting. Something new we're trying. We're always trying new stuff. Um, I had to figure out how to do face uh, Instagram stories. I hear that's what fly. everybody's going to now. Um, Got to do the stories. So, did you do anything different than you typically do at state contests? No, I ran. I ran Your AP basic. thirty minutes, a little bit of hot rub, grilled it, brushed it with a little butter, sprinkled it with just a little bit of steak rub that I kind of ground up a little bit just to take a little bit of the chunkiness off, and rolled it. Chunkiness. And man, it was good. Well, you know, the, the steak rub. The coarseness. Yeah. Steak rub, <laughs> I, I like it on some steaks. I, I like I like the coarse peppers and salts and all that. When I'm eating a steak, it makes a good crust on the outside. Mm-hmm. But for judging, I don't want to put anything on there that's going to bring, you know, make a big enough piece where they're going to question it's a foreign object or yeah. so, they might get a taste of a peppercorn that they don't like or yeah. something like that. So I always put a little grind on it. That's a good idea. It just breaks it up, and really, it opens up those flavors and, and some of those uh, bigger spices. It releases some of the oil in them, so you get a little bit different flavor. It's a little more uh, potent. It's really good ground up. It makes up. a great finishing dust. I'll yeah. tell you, it makes a really good finishing dust. I'd never dust. tried it ground up till Sunday. And oh, we, you I know. did it in the World Foods. I've been to I, I just don't tell everybody I do that. Now I <laughs> now. <have>. It's <laughs> I out now. It. Um, Sometimes you got to toast and grind your spices, man. Yeah. And you know, Those uh, are secrets though. Uh, Michael did really good. You know, he wasn't as afraid of the fire. You know, the mm-hmm. grill and, and things like that. I was so. proud of him. Yeah, he, he did, did really he good. Tied his steaks up. He picked them. Did he, I, I was picking out mine. Did you pick them out or did he pick them out? Um, I kind of picked them out. Okay. But he trimmed them. He watched yeah. me trim, and then he stood there and trimmed, and then he. Uh, I let him go season them. I, I don't think he used our stuff. I think he went down there and was using some There's mojos no and some swine lice. And he might have had some heat jalapeno. He got a little heavy with the yeah. seasoning. Well, he he's he's he, whatever it was. He did good. What do you call it when you? Uh, ooh, I want to try that. Ooh, I want to try that. Uh, yeah. Ooh, I want to try that. He gets that way he with every, that all that seasons. Long way. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> So, um, I have to bring up the Valentine's meal that you cooked. Well, I kind of helped Man, you a little bit, seems but like really. It, seems like that's been forever ago. <laughs> that was just last Thursday night, right? Yes. We didn't get to go it anywhere. Well, we had week. a kid, you know, and 
Uh, this is a school night, so instead of going out to dinner, I decided I was going to cook my Valentine. And going out to dinner my special is lady. Over, <laughs> it's overrated on Valentine's yeah. Day anyway. It's crowded. It's, you know. I didn't tell you, but I kind of got a two-for-one out of that because I did a steak practice, too. Yeah. <laughs> and you tried that boars and cheese sauce. And I did dinner. for the video. Man, I got all kinds of, that was all kinds of test and tune going on and for a special dinner. but uh, It's not... Um, you show your love with food. <laughs> I do. I, I, there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with loving somebody and expressing it through some food you cook for them? To me, that's like, I provided this for you. I, I, I made delicious. this for you. I'm trying to woo you with it and let you know that, that with me, you're going you're gonna to be sustained. I'm going to have to post a picture I took to my Instagram. Because it's impressive. You went yeah. all out. Oh, I made the shrimp cocktail. It was shrimp cocktail. And this, these are some monster shrimp. Like, they oh, were yeah. big. They, they were, were delicious. U15s. Yeah, they're great. And then um, the weak link was the bread. But you didn't make the bread. I, you just I just bought some, some bread. Yeah, some of that bakery pre-sliced stuff. So it was, it was a ribeye, right? Ribeye. Asparagus. Did, uh, baked potato. Seasoned baked potato on the outside. Um, and then had like a little potato bar thing to, to put whatever you'd like on it. Oh, no. He had little um, scoops of butter, like where you scoop it and let it harden up. I did. I used a little <laughs> melon baller, scooped that out and reset them and had them to where it looked like it looked like I was trying to do the Capitol Grill style for, at the house. At the house. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I did it up. And we got to stay in, you know, did sweatpants asparagus for that. while we ate too. I did, did I do asparagus? Asparagus, mushrooms. Yeah. I did the asparagus and the mushrooms because yeah. we were kind of running low on time. Somebody stopped by and mm-hmm. you got behind, so I jumped in and helped. But uh, and Those then, on the Weber too. They were great. I forgot how good that Weber cooks a ribeye. And then um, you bought... Cheesecake from City Hall, City, yeah, City, a local City cheesecake, Hall cheesecake. And then there was four bottles of wine. Four <laughs> bottles of wine. That's what makes it extra special. <laughs> and then we Ooh. went to bed early. I can't remember what happened after that. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> okay, so real quick, um, Cosmo was here last week. I wanted to talk about that. We didn't really get a t- chance to talk about it because Cosmo came on, we and the then we cooked first. the next day. So... Um, sandwich. It was oh, really man. good. If y'all hadn't seen that the chicken sandwich video that Cosmo did, man, you need to go watch that video. It's doing really well. The video is doing well too. But that sandwich was out of this world. I mean, his it would have been good. Now he used his new Nashville um, hot chicken seasoning, which was fantastic. Puts a nice spice on it, brings the heat. But um, man, you could do that sandwich all different kinds of ways. It'd be good with like a barbecue rub dust. And so the key to that one was frying in that peanut oil. And then before it has time to really drain. Yeah, that was a good tip. Get the seasoning on it. Because, I, I mean, you know, normally I, I've always known like say if you do French fries, you salt them since they come out of the mm-hmm. grease. But I've never tried to do that to chicken. Yeah. As soon as it comes out, put the, put the flavor town to them. Because that was, I mean, I'm, that's going to change my chicken wing game. As soon as they come out of the grease, I'm going I'm to do some dry seasoning. Instead of bringing like them in and t- tossing, tossing them, them and draining them, then tossing them and yeah, stuff, that's true. Right there at the at the fryer. As soon as they come out, get, you know, hit them, hit them on one side, flip them over quick, hit them on the other side, and let that soak in with that grease, you know, drying up. It's drying that seasoning down into it. And so it changes that outside crust. It stayed crunchy as it could be, but it had all that flavor in it. Yeah. It's like that grease soaked, you yeah. know, soaked and, it up. And then he did the mayo. The he kind of used that same season for his mayo with some horseradish. Yeah. That was good. It was good. The whole sandwich went together really well, mm-hmm. and you know, it was pretty spicy. I think you could take. It that. got a good burn to it, but I mean, I ate it. I think you could take that uh, seasoning and or and do it with a ranch instead of just a mayo. You know, like a like a yeah. thick ranch dressing. And then put the yeah. seasoning to it like that, so you get some of those. Because I really like with that flavor, I like ranch. Yeah, I I kind of like the mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> brought to you by Blue Plate. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that Blue Plate sponsorship. sponsorship. Anybody um, that's a Blue Plate man, <laughs> send him our way. We just need mayonnaise. Yeah, a year supply of mayonnaise. Send us a poster, a t-shirt, and it's or something. more than you would think. Yeah. Um, your supply of mayonnaise. <laughs> I can I go down there right now. I bet you there's four, four and a half jars of mayonnaise in our refrigerator at that, different stages of, of being used. That is only because You've been we doing had, a lot of cooking. we've been doing a bunch of cooking. And I it's, think it's all the time. <laughs> I really do. It normally is only one or two. 
So the sound was kind of jacked up because we were working on a timeline. The wind was crazy. I mean, we were fighting storms that day. So the sound oh, was yeah. jacked up. Yeah. And I hated that, but it is what it is, you know. I tried my best to make it work. Um, and no one really complained about it. It was fried, <laughs> you know, because it's how to barbecue, right? Yeah, yeah, that, it was That was fried, the first yeah. time we've How to done, fry, right? Yeah. It can't all be grill or smoke. I mean, you got to do different ways of cooking. It's all about the cooking. And so um, t- the, I'm segueing to this new segment I want to add. Hey, before we get off that, what about yeah. the pork rinds? That was, man, those pork rinds seasoned with his seasoning. And I just thought of that. That wasn't in the plan at all. When he told me, he called me and said he wanted to do a chicken sandwich. And I was like, I'm cool with it. You know, he's got to get back on the road and get back to Oklahoma. Yeah, he wanted something fast. So we make that happen. And then when he started frying it, I was like, man, I got some of those pork rind pellets in there. And everybody asked, where did I get those? Well, I didn't make them. They come from a company called American Skins. And you can Google them. They have, I think it's pork dash rinds dash dot com or something like that something yeah. like that but just google them uh, there's american another company skins. too american yeah. skin pork pellet and it'll be the first return on google yeah and it's uh i bought about a 25 pound box and it is a lot of pork pellets and man they are what's the cost of a 25 pound oh, it's, box i don't know 50 60 bucks but okay. man it'll make so many pork rinds. you can go in with a couple bags. yeah that's what I, I split them what i do is i put them in gallon bags when i get them I want to say it makes like six full gallon bags yeah. of pork pellets, and they'll last. Heck, I've had them last six months. I mean, I don't, I've never had them go bad. I've always used them, but they're greasy because I mean they're pork fat. So. And when you have a box show up on your front step that's covered in grease and leaking almost, <laughs> you got to you got to do something else, yeah, yeah, because they just package them in like this big clear <laughs> plastic bag yeah. inside a box. It's very and, institutional. Yeah, um, they're good. So I need to, I need to, I never tried to make my own, but that would be a good thing. I kind of know how to do it because what you have to do, you have to get the skin first and you have to boil it. And then you have to, because that's getting it tender or whatever, getting all the meat off of it. It's just getting it down to the skin. And then you have to take it out and dry it real good. And then you can cut it up and then you dehydrate it for 12 hours and it turns into those pellets. And then you're ready to fry them. So. I haven't tried it yet, just because it's an involved process. I imagine but, you would need a lot of skin to make it happen. Oh yeah, I would. I would think. Yeah, you know, pork. If I had some pork belly skin on pork bellies, probably about five or six of them. Just to get like them. a what? What you? Oh uh, yeah, it just to get like a big serving. Worth, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I imagine you get several out of that. I would think. I don't know. That's good. I mean, that's a good little project for yeah. me to work on. I'm gonna try. When it. you hold the pellets up, they're almost translucent. Yeah, it's just the skin that's been dehydrated. Yeah, and you can kind of see the pores and stuff if you hold them mm-hmm. up. Um, so anyway, I was gonna take a second. We're going to add a new segment where you answer some questions from your YouTube video from the past week. Sure. Good. <laughs> <laughs> this could be a tricky segment. Is it going to be? Is it going to be like certified real questions? Or is it going to be? Oh, I'm, I'm mixed up. It's going to be a trolley. I just oh, pulled trolleys. about ten of them. Yeah. So much. I love all your videos, but this one is awesome. Nothing like having a buddy over, hanging out, cooking some great food. The heart of backyard cooking from Richie Allison. Thanks, Richie. <laughs> That was more of a statement. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for watching. You're right. Anytime, <laughs> that's why I do what I do because it's kind of what my whole thing is. It's like I'm cooking with my buddy. So, and that's one reason you know we bring. I want to learn something, but I've been bringing people on, so it's more like us hanging out. Kind of keeps that vibe going. Gives you something fresh, new today. I appreciate the positive comment. <laughs> That one guy. So Raga01 says, man, how is he going to claim KFC doesn't have an authentic Nashville hot chicken dish and then make his own unauthentic version? The heat is supposed to be oil mixed with seasoning and then finished the fried chicken, you know, blah, blah, blah. Hey, that wasn't my recipe. I was just <laughs> learning. I don't think he said this is authentic. No, he said Nashville it was a dr- Nashville chicken. dry seasoning. Yeah, he just I did. Took a, the I did my take on a, a Nashville hot chicken sauce where I used the oil and the salt, or you know, and made it. That is true. He is right. That's not you know. Yeah. But I, I, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's their style. That's it. your take. You know, I think when we're doing this YouTube stuff, I'm not trying to duplicate. I didn't say it was a copycat version. Mm-hmm. It's just a. It's just a take on it. So. And I would prefer the dry rub yeah. anyway because that oil, it can be a little much. And you know? the Colonel's from Kentucky anyway. He yeah. What's he know about Nashville chicken? Have you ever ate one of those KFC? Not- oh, yeah. I made a mistake one time 
Me too. It'll, it'll put you. You better stay close to your facilities. All I got to say about that, it will get you. They I don't just, even think it's on the menu anymore, is it? I don't no, know. They, they got rid of all their old grease, so they said, we'll take that off. <laughs> they used it just like them old steaks. <laughs> <laughs> just like to repurpose it. We'll call it Nashville. Chicken. Okay, this one says. Oh, that's a genius move. <laughs> My cardiologist had a F heart attack thinking about how much money he's going to make. Man, I'm sure they do. My cardiologist loves me. You know, I tell you. That cash register's rolling. I would have Hashtag added cheese. Libertor. I would have added cheese and bacon, and that would have been one amazing sandwich. That, hey, you, you no joke about that. So I, I'm all about that. What kind of cheese would you have added? Mm, Maybe like a, a jack. jack? Yeah. That would have been good. The bacon definitely would have been good. Bacon would have been good. I'll tell you what would have been real good with it. You could have topped it with some pulled pork. <laughs> Why wouldn't that have been good? Yeah. Memphis, now that's something Memphis to get upset Nashville. about, like, your cardiologist. Why is your cardiologist upset when you're just having a fried chicken sandwich? It's not like you're having it four times a day. No, yeah, I don't know. Every they day. They want you to eat right. lettuce, shell. Trolls. Um, <laughs> would you consider cheese with that sandwich? We yeah. said that. Yep, yep, yep. Bacon, add bacon to that to make it even better. That would be good, too. Yeah. I think the bacon's really good. Um, here's a good one. Now, would the chicken be better tasting if it was brine, or does that even matter when you're frying? That's from Man, you Riff could, Raff. I would say, I yeah, I would say food. you could definitely soak that chicken. I mean, what the rumor is, like Chick-fil-A does theirs and pickle juice, but you could brine that chicken for a little while. Yeah. Um, thinner cuts, because those were... Um, Kind of the fillets. Yeah, breast fillets. Breast fillets. It's not going to take as long. You wouldn't want to soak it long enough to where it's really breaking it down. But if you wanted to get some more flavor in it. Buttermilk is hey, common. Buttermilk hot sauce. Mm-hmm. That would have been a good one. And then battered it in the egg wash yeah. and, and that. And then fried it. Man, that it brought some really spice good. then. It would have, really, yeah, have been really good. Yeah. So you had nothing wrong with that. Um, this one says, what kind of deep fryer is that, Malcolm? Uh, Cajun Works. And, man, it's awesome. Uh, I, love I it. think it's a four gallon. I don't know. It's the. It's supposed to be it's a big enough. Basket. It's, when, when I got it, it was like big enough to do a whole fried turkey. But you definitely want the double basket. They make a single basket version, but from what I hear with them, a single basket doesn't have enough oil to recover fast enough. So when you're dropping, you know, you're dropping a basket full of say French fries yeah. or whatever that's cold or anything, it's, yeah. it's going to drop the tip of your oil too much with that double basket. It, it it works well enough to where there's enough oil to where it doesn't change the temperature of it. And it's just, man, it lines out there about 375, right where you'd want to fry. I usually try to hold it between 350 and 375 on most stuff. And really, it wouldn't be that much more expensive to get the double I don't think it's I don't mind. think it's much more at all. But Cajun, Cajun works, but I think it's like it's a Cajun, Cajun RV works or something like that if you Google it. It's called a Cajun fryer by Cajun, Cajun. RV works or something like that. They make uh, they make bigger fryers. I think they make crawfish boilers. I think they make some kind of a smoker too, or some kind of a propane type grill that smokes. So I think, go check their website out. Um, this person says uh, that made a comment on the fryer, saying, it "Looks like that would be a pain to clean." All we do is drain it and then hit it with some water and try to get it. You wipe know, it out. Wipe it out. Yeah, I mean it's grease. It's it, I've not, cleaned it before. Yeah. It's, it's if you drain it while it's still a little warm, it's not bad. Filter the grease and yeah, let it grease, roll. Yeah, the grease. Yeah, it's just like everything else. If yeah, you get no on top of it. Yeah, it's no different cleaning out anything else. If you let it sit for the winter, yeah, it'll probably get pretty bad. That's nothing but a Chick Fil A spicy deluxe. Look out! That's my favorite sandwich from Chick Fil A. <laughs> This person says, how long do you have to dehydrate the skins? But we kind of already answered that I question. I think it's like 12, uh, 12 hours on just a standard dehydrator like I have. I don't have any fancy dehydrator. But I, I know you boil them to get all, to get them real soft, get all the meat off, make it just sure the skin, so I scrape everything down to just the skin, and then you dry it really good, and then that's when you can go ahead and cut it into strips or whatever size pellets you want. And then you put that on the dehydrator and let it roll like 12 hours, and they should be good to go. This person, Jerry Hubbard, says, believe it or not, I used to eat pork rinds and apple salts. Try it. You may like it. Uh, you know, I like it with pimento cheese. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. We use it with pimento cheese. You know, 
is it applesauce and um, cottage cheese I've seen people eat before. Cottage cheese and pineapples or something weird like that. Ugh. I'll tell you, um, those pork rinds make really good uh, barbecue nachos mm-hmm. instead of using, and it, you know, you're getting away from all the carbs because they're net zero carbs. Um, they're healthy is what you're saying. Oh, yeah, they're real healthy. Yeah. And it's all that good fat. I'll just clarify. It's the good fat, the pork kind. <laughs> Rack Slabis said, Malcolm pulled those pork skins out like it was a bag of weed. <laughs> <laughs> How you like it now? I was holding. Um, how did he toast the bread? Um, I toasted the bread, and I actually yeah used a cast iron, just like I would do a grilled cheese sandwich. Got a cast iron. Um, I actually put a very thin layer of mayonnaise <laughs> I need a bell ring. Ding, 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 ding. Every time. That's common, okay? That yeah, is. <laughs> That's a secret in the grilled cheese, right? Yeah. When you do a grilled cheese competition. Well, it's just an oil that helps uh, yeah. give you that crustiness. And we only did one side. So you still had so you had a crunchy side, and then you still had a soft side. Mm-hmm. Just like grilled cheese sandwich. You know what else is good to put that light mayo on? Like that, a light coat on a, if you're making quesadilla. Yeah, you can same do that. Thing. You can put like a brush, a little light mayo on it, throw it down the skillet, stuff it, and fold it. It browns it up really well because it is that mayo is just a fat. Yeah, but it really does make it. Mm-hmm. It does. It's, it's really better. Good. It works to me better than butter for that. You yeah. know, maybe it's because you can spread it so much thinner and easier. You know, it's good um, stuff. Hey, get Chef Tom from Wichita from All Things Barbecue for our guest appearance. Man, I'd like, I never yeah. met him, but I'd love to meet Chef Tom. And it does, they do Let's a good call job. Let's him out. Chef Tom, come down to Mississippi. It'd be a good one, yeah. Where are I they got, located? I got, I got two yoders he can cook on. <laughs> I got a 640 and a 480. I got two 480s. One of them's at Deer Camp, though. This person says it'd be great if you would stop having guests and just do your thing that make you good. Well,. I mean, I enjoy This person it. I, says, I love the collaboration videos. Yeah, I, 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 I'd rather have, to me, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I like doing my recipes, but I like learning stuff too. And so if I can bring somebody else on, you know, throw them a little uh, YouTube love, hopefully people will go check them out. But yeah. also for me to learn something, it changes the channel up just a little bit where it's not just about me trying to do a recipe every week. And I, I like uh, the new kind of styles we're working on. we got a couple other ideas too that yeah. – Hopefully. I mean, it's, it's you know, it each his own. If you, I, I thank y'all for watching me. I appreciate it. Um, and if they don't like it, they don't have to watch it. Yeah. I want you still to watch it. <laughs> um, this was a pretty good – this is something that you did, but when I was editing it, didn't make it. This one says put an empty basket on top of the basket with the pork rinds in them to oh, make yeah, sure they're completely I always do that. Once they start coming up, usually I'll take that other basket and move it over. Yeah. And that way it kind of holds them down. It Now, I didn't put a time on it, and it happens really fast, but usually it's about 90 seconds. I've kind of timed it before in cooking them. I can do a batch in 90 seconds. And I let them, I throw them in and spread them out. You don't overcrowd it. Let them start floating up, stick the other basket on there, hold them down a little bit. Or you can use a spider, anything to kind of hold them. You know, one of those, mm-hmm. you know what a spider is. Hold them down. That way they, they fully pop because they're kind of popping. That's what they're doing. Yeah. They're expanding, popping, and you got to get them down because if you don't, they'll have tough spots in them. Yeah, from where they didn't get good and cooked, or didn't get didn't have enough hot oil on them to where they. That was pop. trial and error. You learned with that one. Yeah, um, it's amazing how big they get. They go from you know this little. And those jar. were, I think the small size. They had three different sizes. They had small, medium, and large. And I bought the large ones, and you can only get like four in one <laughs> basket. I mean, they're monsters. I mean. I think that and size is a perfect size. That's the perfect size. size for me for eating. It's almost equivalent to like a chip size. There's not too many great big ones. And they cook, the to, for, to me, the smaller ones cook better. Mm-hmm. Faster, more mm-hmm. even. Yep, yeah, faster, more even. Um, last one. Crispy Frosting said, how to die of heart disease and ass cancer. <laughs> you take care of yourself, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> What's the... How to die of <laughs> Man, I hope I don't get that. <laughs> Go Which one? That'd be a bad one to get. The South <laughs> the Pole. I don't want the South Pole. I don't take the heart disease. Don't say that. You got to die of Subway, but man, please. Why does it got to go the South way? That's terrible to wish on somebody. 
<laughs> I don't think they wished it. Oh, okay. They They're weren't. Just, they weren't hoping I get it. They were just telling me that's what's going to happen. <laughs> they were just warning you. Hey, fiber up. That's all. That's the cure to that. You got you to gotta offset some fiber. It can't all be pork fat. You put lettuce on it. Bacon, yeah. <laughs> And you recommended a tomato. <laughs> and pickles. Yeah. Like it was practically a salad. <laughs> okay. That concludes that segment. Yeah, we get some good. Yeah, y'all should go read some of those comments sometimes. They're really entertaining, but I like that. That's a fun little segment, Cheryl. <laughs> some of them will make you want to crawl Re- in the... Rethink what you're doing for <laughs> yeah. your living. Um, okay, so... Walk around the block. <laughs> I thought we'd talk about uh, wild game cooking. Okay. Yeah, man. Well, that's kind of where we went this week with the yeah. deer. But uh, Just quickly talk about it a little bit. We got a few minutes. Um, some recipes I grew up with, because I grew up in the country, in the country with a K, I guess is what they used to say. Hmm. And deer was a staple. Y'all ate a lot of uh, other stuff, too, besides just deer meat. You did. Uh, I wrote down some things <clears throat> that we had that was, I'd consider wild game. I've, um, I've heard them talk. Rabbit. Rabbit and dumplings. Wild hogs. Yeah, wild squirrel, boars. <laughs> coon. Pretty much anything <laughs> I can catch. When you live down in the bottom, um, they, would they, still catch, they still trap wild boar, and yeah. they're working on their wild So what's the wild boar recipe? Is it the, the sausage is the main thing they yeah. use before they ground it? That's, sausages, they're a big thing. I'm not. I've like had wild some boar. wild boar. The best one that I've ever had, and we had it at duck camp this past year. Uh, a guy had some little suckling wild boar pigs, but they weren't they weren't um, free range. They were some that somebody grew on like a farm. It was some they could sell for restaurants. And man, you talk about it was different tasting, it, it, but because they were way leaner than what you're used to in domestic pig, but it had a really good rich flavor to it. And, you know, anytime you're eating suckling animals, they, yeah, yeah. they just taste good. But that's been the only way I've ever had it besides, uh, you know, sausage, some wild boar sausage. And I like wild boar sausage. Well, you've told me before that you're a little, you know, I'm, you know, those skittish things. Skittish around wild boars. They're, well, they're, they carry so many diseases. Yeah. And it's Explain not, that a, to it's me. not in eating the meat. I mean, a wild boar had, I mean, they have, I forget the name of all of them. I'm not a scientist. But they uh, they carry all kinds of bacteria, and they have some path, uh, pathogens in them that if if you were to you know have a cut or something on your skin and you come in contact with some of them, that it, it can they prove that it can pass on to humans. And to me, I, I don't want to work with that raw meat just for that chance. It's not worth it. I actually had a butcher friend tell me that you know they, that when they process animals, they refuse to do. Uh, wild hogs because of the dangers of it and there's some states that they won't even let them process them because of it and so to me you know once once it's cooked they say it's okay you have no danger of getting anything from it cooked. Once it's fully cooked but right. it's it's handling and you know the processing of it where there's you know some question marks and that's why it's been always my stance people have asked me to cook them for them and i'm like man i really don't want to put that on my grill i don't want to you know I don't want to do it. And yeah. that's why I've kind of stayed away from it. But, um, you well, know. when you talk about a farm, I know a lot of people that do. Boar. Farm raised mm-hmm. wild boar is different. They're not, you know, they're a controlled environment. They're not getting, they're not exposed. Because a, a wild hog will eat anything. I mean, yeah. they're just. They're, a domestic they hog animals. will eat anything. Oh, yeah. The, but, I mean, they, they devastate cropland. I mean, they wreck, they wreck land. And they're a nuisance animal that, you know, you got to kill them. But, man, I sure don't want to. Have to process them. I had one eat. I know. I got some buddies that do it, man. They go out and get them out of the traps and get in there with yeah. them. They don't care. They've Shoot become them. like they've become a nuisance, really. Oh yeah, especially around. That ain't um, for me though. Yeah. Um, but you've gotten pretty good at cooking deer, you know. Yeah, deer's probably the main. I mean, I cook some elk. I did a recipe on elk last year. Um, you know, wild turkeys. One, uh, yeah, that's that's a good way to do like Cosmo's recipe. That's pretty much what we've always done turkey. Is cut it up in strips. It's cut the, usually, I mean, the breast is about the only thing we cook on that animal. On the because wild the, turkey, yeah, because of the legs and and the rest of it's just muscles. It's not like you know regular domestic turkey. The breast is what where it's at. But man, cut up, marinated in buttermilk and and hot sauce, and then dredged in flour and deep fried. Wild turkey is really good like that. I bet that Nashville hot. Uh, oh, it's just seasoning would, would be good. good on yeah. That, yeah. Um, 
Well, duck is really good, and I make a marinade. It's it's the bait. I was gonna say it's kind of similar to the venison marinade, but it's really Italian dressing based, and it has some Worcestershire and soy in it. But it's more of Italian dressing, and then we soak the duck breast in it, and then we we kind of do them like poppers, just like you would uh, jalapeno poppers, where you, you know you can add a um, jalapeno, cream cheese, seasoned up however you want, a piece of the duck breast, wrap it in bacon, and just about any wild game you can cook that way. Yeah. It's good. The <laughs> duck's really good that way. And uh we I mean that's that's one of my favorite ways to cook it. Now I do have some duck I'm gonna be playing with in the freezer and some uh goose. And I've did some of that in the beeper. I think we talked about that before, but uh I've got a recipe that a buddy of mine uh, gave me that gave me the goose and he says he cooks it just like pot roast. And you're not supposed to be able to tell the difference in it and beef. I mean you you kinda you know how I do a chuck roast where I season it up and then put it on the smoker and get some get some smoke on the outside, get some bark going, and then we move it over to a pan that we you know um, use a, a kind of a brazing liquid with, where you know it's got a little red wine and it. it's got your vegetables, your aromatics, it's got some chicken broth, um, things like that that goes in this liquid, and then you surround that goose breast with it and cover it with aluminum foil, and you cook it till it's falling apart, and it's supposed to be just like pot roast. And, Sounds good. And, I'm in. Yeah, and so that's that's a recipe that I'm going to have to try it before I do a video on it, but I do want to share that with everybody, how it looks and how it turns out. Yeah. Because a lot of people, I've heard that, you know, they don't like goose because they say it's, you know, it's a little gamey or it has a weird taste or weird texture or something like that. But I want to see if I could turn it into that recipe and it's really good. So that's what I'm going to be working on. And, um you know, you you do you have a couple recipes where you're using like deer tenderloin, but what do you do with the tougher cuts? Um, well, I do, do you cook, I'm can you do, cook them the same? Yeah, I'm going to do a barbecue deer roast um, to where it's kind of you could it's, it's kind of like making pulled pork. We're just going to do it with some deer meat, and it's along that same principle: get some seasoning on it, get some smoke on it, and then break it down, braise it till it breaks down, and then you can you could really go any way you want. It's kind of like the uh, goose going like a pot roast. I'm just going to go like a barbecue pulled pork where I'll use some more seasonings and then some barbecue sauce and mix it up. And then make, um, you can make sandwiches. You can make, I think I'm about doing deer tacos that, with I it. Like you that. know, kind of go that way. Because when, as I was growing up, that was common for us to have like pulled deer we sandwiches. Do, um, it was usually in a crock pot though. You know, we do stew meat. Um, yeah. That's a, that's a big one to do. It kind of makes like a, a beef stew kind of. It's a, most of the time you do it in a crock pot. You don't do it on the smoker, but. That would be one that you could do. Um, I've seen I've seen guys smoke the whole front shoulders, and they kind of do it the same way till the bones just are spit out, and you're just getting out chunks of meat, and they do it. There's one that's kind of been around a long while. It's where they use a whole two liter of Pepsi, and then oh, they'll do, you know yeah. put some vegetables in there. You marinate it for like 24 hours, and then you cook it covered until the bones are just coming out. You know, and so then you're they shred just it. cooking like the whole shoulder. Yeah, the whole shoulder. That's it. Um, I've cut deer steaks out of the hams before the hindquarters and, and grilled those. It's not near as good as the backstrap. Yeah, Usually tough. that's what I use for it. Um, I grind a lot of the backstrap, yeah. the, the hindquarters too. That's where you get your sausage. I'm going to do some burgers. I want to do, um, I had this idea the other day to do kind of not really like a hamburger. I was going to do, you know, you've had a chop, you've seen on steakhouses where they do chop steak. And it's basically yeah. just a big hamburger patty, and they serve it with peppers and onions and gravy. I'm gonna do that with some deer. Now that sounds good. And we're gonna, that's gonna be a recipe that I'm gonna do and show everybody how to how to cook it, how to make that gravy. Put it back in a cat, you know, get some smoke on kind of a no flip burger, and then put it back in a Dutch oven, and then let it cook down with the onions and peppers, and make the gravy and all that. And it's really, really good. Yes, it's really good. I always um, tell people that there was. When we were first married, uh, there was some times when we processed. You would kill a few deer. We'd process it. You know, even the tougher cuts, we'd grind. Oh, yeah. But, Sausage, yeah, ground beef. Yeah. We processed it all ourselves, and that's what we lived off of for, for a year. year. Heck, yeah. I've, we'd have deer tacos, hamburger chili, helper deer. Whatever you could do with ground beef, <laughs> I could do with deer, and it's really better for you. Yeah. I mean, not everybody's got, you know, that. I guess that much deer in the freezer. <laughs> We were poor. Yeah. We were using the coupons to buy hamburger yeah. yeah. helper. It's cheaper than hamburger because I can go out and get it. I can go get some deer. One thing that's, I don't know, is kind of a staple of my childhood was fried deer because my that's, dad would come home and fry the deer tenderloin and biscuits and I've gravy. I've got some deer tender, uh, tenderloin in the freezer, too, and I was going to do that since I got the fryer already broke out for the year. 
We got to do you got to do some fried tuna. Oh one. yeah, it's so good. He would yeah. make tomato gravy to go with it, but really? I don't have that recipe. I'm gonna have to figure that one I'm out. I'm buttermilk gravy with mine. I want biscuits yeah. and buttermilk gravy and probably mashed potatoes with some brown gravy. He would do That's rice. Like, yeah, really, right. Yeah, that rice would be good with it. Yeah. You remember we actually went and judged a wild game cook off. Yep, yep. In Corinth. Corinth, Mississippi. They had it at the fairgrounds. There was some really good stuff. Mm. And some bad stuff. <laughs> and some really bad stuff. I did not like the beaver. <laughs> there was somebody that did like beaver meatballs or something. God. It was my, it was horrible. It was horrible. You know the ones that stood out as like and the and the ones that ended up in the top ten. Um, did almost like you did, like they didn't overcook it. They kept yeah. it really just the meat, you know, a little seasoning, a little bit of this, and they didn't overcook it. Right. You know, that was the key to it. That's, I mean, that's it with deer. You're, you're going to cook all the flavor out of it by cooking it over, and it's probably any wild game. But, um, yeah, I'm not a fan of beaver. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Somebody did raccoon and somebody did possum, too. Yeah. The raccoon was actually okay. The possum, then they ain't hitting on nothing either. I don't know about see. Did you eat, did you remember eating that possum? I don't remember eating that possum. I, it seems like something I would be like, yeah, yeah, I'll try it. But it's not something yeah, I'm. No, I know for me. I'm trying to do again. Any, uh, well, you kind of talked about this. I, I wrote down any wild game recipes you'd like to try in the future that you haven't done already, yeah, but I've you kind of just I'll went on your own. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. I've got several, but, um, I've actually, I've been going through Justin Wilson's cookbook. <laughs> you, you know, you got me those a couple of years yeah. back. And he's got some different stuff in there. And so I was going to see what, what I could take, you know, some of the ideas that he had, but uh, do them more where you can do them on the smoker grill and put my spin on some, because I mean, he's got some stuff in there. Does that, he have Nutria in it? Oh, yeah, there's a Nutria. <laughs> I'm not doing Nutria. Right. <laughs> I'm not. If anybody, I, it's like I, think worse than I need to see if I can find somebody <laughs> from Louisiana to come up to a video. Bring a new that, would be a good one. that would be a good one. That would be a good one. That is one thing I know I've never tried. Yeah. I didn't grow up quite that far south. Now I've, had now, I've had gator and it's good, but I've never cooked the whole yeah, gator. You know, I've had gator before and it's been kind of swampy, you know, um, and I've had gator before when it's been really, really good. Yeah, the best way I've ever had it, and I guess it was farm raised gator because they did it like uh, buffalo chicken wings. Yeah. And it was just the little pieces of the leg that they did and fried. And those were, those were, it was just a lot like frog legs, really. Yeah. But those were good. And I've had some really good gator sauce. Sausage. And they uh, they make some gator boudin down there. Gator and bites is pretty common yeah, at some yeah. restaurants. Where I imagine it's just tail it's meat in, cubed like, and fried. You know, like you said, sometimes you get it and it's swampy is a good, it's real fishy is what it is. Mm-hmm. It's tough and fishy, but most people overcook it. So you got to know how, when you're frying gator, you can't just fry it to its. You know, hard yeah. as a rock, because it is. It's going to be fishy tasting, but if it's cooked just right, it's really good. Yeah, it's tender. Now, those barbecue gators that you see people tender. doing, I don't know. I've never, I don't know about that. Where they, like, leave the head on and wrap the body of bacon. bacon. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. I'd try it, but I've never attempted to cook it. You'd show up where someone else is cooking it. Yeah, and see, and watch everybody else try it, then I might. I wrote that meat eater show. You watch that yeah, one show, Meat Eater. Yeah, that's one of my favorite shows on the hunting channel. It's really good. Yeah. He does some. Now, you know, he got sick. They got sick bad off bear meat one time. I've never ate bear, but they were. Well, they get like trichinosis or something? Yeah, they did, really. They did. And bear is one of the animals that, you know, everybody thinks you can still get it from hogs. Well, I don't know if there's been a case found in domestic hogs in 50 years. But bears, one of the animals, I don't think it was, was it salmonella or trichinosis? It's, I think it's trichinosis is what they got. It's one of the bad ones. They got the tree. They put, them in, they put them all in the hospital. The cast and Steve. What's his name? Steve Rennell. Is that what it is? I think so. Yeah, the meat eater. But they uh, they were they ate it undercooked. They were trying to cook it on some, if I remember right, it was on some rocks. Like they built a fire and got some rocks hot. And they were going to throw the bear meat on there. Well, they didn't get it done at all. I mean, it wasn't even close to being rare. It was, you know, He hadn't checked blue. up from it. No, it put them down for a while, though. And it uh, wouldn't they? What, I thought trichinosis was like almost like heartworms in some type of way. Is it? That's I don't know. I don't know. Is that am I yeah. thinking about the right thing? I don't know. You have to look that up. It's one of the, it's a bad disease. I know whatever it is, it's a it's some kind of bacteria, or pathogen, or something that gets in you in your bloodstream. Yeah. I thought I don't know. You don't want it. 
You don't want it. But he, he cooks. But he, he cooks. Apparently Bear notorious for it. They say Bear meets one, they say of, the bear meets one of the better wild games. It's like supposed to have like a sweet flavor. Really? But, uh, I'd try it. I just want to make sure it's cooked. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've never. He cooks all kinds of stuff, though, man. He, he's all about using the whole animal. Oh, uh, well, I was watching one night. Where you were watching it, and I just happened to be in there. He cooked the head. He just put the whole head he underneath the fire. It was kind of like a barbacoa, barbacoa Mexican yeah. style where they cooked the cow's head. He did it with a deer head. And they made tacos it. with it. Yeah. Cooked it clean. Come out clean. You just picked the skull mm-hmm. and the jawbone up, and then all that was left was some meat. I bet it tasted pretty good. I'd try that. Yeah. You know, I've had goat's head. To me, deer is like a wild goat. Yeah. And... That's uh, that's uh, that's it's about the same thing. Goat's head's pretty good. Goat's head's pretty good. I've had curry goat's. I've had curry goat's head. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was Asian style. Yeah, it was like a Thai. It was it a Vietnamese restaurant we were in. Or? Did I have goat's head? I don't think you were there then. Yeah, but, that didn't sound familiar to me. It was a Tan Din down there in, uh, in New, New Orleans. Orleans. Yeah, really it was really good. Curry goat's head. Curry I've, goat's head. I like goat. That's that's one I've had some good goat yeah. in my day. That's one thing we I grew up eating. <laughs> Did they how y'all cook? So they cut it up in pieces and marinate it. cook it like yeah. steak. That's how. That's how I've had it. Just like how they do. Um, like, you know they do those. No, they would cook it and make like almost pulled pork, but it was pulled goat. Oh really? Yeah, and you'd make pulled goat sandwiches with yeah. it. Okay. I try that. I try that. This is rednecks, you know. So it's Chefy. So it's Chefy. This yeah. wasn't how you would do it. This wasn't how you would do it. <laughs> oh, it was uh, <laughs> See what I've been cooking this big pit and throw it out. I mean, it was good. I'm not, wrong with I'm not yeah. Chefy at all. I'll get down with them. I'll get down with them on some goat. I ain't scared. Well, that's about all, well, I, that's about all I had for today. That's all the questions we're going to talk about. That's all about all I've got. We're, we're I'll tell you what, we're going to go. We've got coming up. Um, Let's talk about what we got coming up. We're getting on a plane, going to the Bahamas. Six. Our plane takes off at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. in the morning. And so um, we're going to try. I hope they have Wi-Fi available. We're going to try to do some posting and kind of show y'all where I'm cooking at down there. We're going to be cooking for the Grill Great uh, Steak Event. It's an SCA event. They've got, I think, 25 Weber kettles down there for us to cook on, Grill Grates. All we got to do is show up with our seasonings. And uh, so i got my bag packed. And we're going to be Green Turtle key right that's where it's at yeah in the bahamas, the bahamas. and i'm gonna try to we're gonna try to take our gopro get some footage of us swimming with the pigs <laughs> when we come back next week to do a podcast it ought to be entertaining we'll give you a full rundown <laughs> on what we did in the bahamas um i told mark williams i wanted to have him back on the podcast okay talk to him a little bit about i don't know whatever he's got going on and then we're judging a little uh non-sanctioned contest again that next weekend over in tupelo mississippi at the country club so anybody that's in that area if y'all i don't know if they still have entries available but it, um it's supposed to be a good little new contest it's not sanctioned or anything i think it's the guys at the the golf, the country club in Tupelo putting it on, and I'm not sure what the proceeds go to, but I'm sure they're raising money for something. You're judging more contests lately than you're cooking. I like judging. You show up, drink beer, eat, go home. <laughs> that's um, well, that's, that's about all we got coming up. I mean, we got you know, a, I have uh, – we get back on a Monday, and on Tuesday we have scheduled to film a video. What video are you going to plant? You're going to just see how the Bahamas hit you? Yeah. I'm, I'm probably coming back with something island vibe. See how it hits me. If I can find something – I'll tell you what. I'm going on a mission to the Bahamas to find something new and on the grill they do. Cause I've been to Jamaica and I've been to Turks, and they're you know they got the jerk stuff going on. I'm gonna see what kind of Bahamian. Uh, Is it Bahamian or Bahamian? Bahamian. 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 Yeah, that's how boy from Mississippi's gonna say it. I'm gonna go down there and see what they throw on the grill, and then we'll bring it back and we'll go do a video on that style and see what we could turn out. Yeah, my. But, uh, I'm gonna try to find me. What's their drink down there? The bushwhack? No, it's not a bushwhacker. It's a, Turtle. Tipsy turtle, maybe. Mm, I don't know. They've got they've got a drink they're known for. It's a rum drink. I'm coming for it. I'm coming for your rum drink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all for watching, Shell. Tell them where they can find us here at How to Barbecue Right. If you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it is How to Barbecue Right at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Twitter and Instagram. But I I never check Twitter. It's Instagram. Well, thank y'all for listening today. Uh, you can download the app um, to you know keep up with all the videos and all the stuff we're doing, the blog posts and things like that. 
Um, hey, we appreciate y'all watching. We appreciate y'all watching. You can listen to the podcast on all the normal places, and you can watch it on YouTube. Thanks for visiting with us. We'll see y'all next time.